Ang kutsok. The President, please be seated. Le Président, veuillez vous asseoir. The President, the court is back in session before I hand over the floor to the defense team for Avant de donner la parole aux équipes de défense, the co-accused, I uh, hand over the floor uh, to the member of the uh, bench uh, to put the question to this uh, civil party témoin. in question. Uh, Judge Fens, you may proceed now. La juge Fens a la parole. Thank you, President. I have um, a few short follow-up questions la juge Fens. to Merci, you. Monsieur le Président. J'aimerais vous poser quelques questions de suivi. You mentioned you saw two workers being electrocuted. En train de se faire Can you tell us what exactly did you see? Pourriez-vous nous décrire exactement ce que vous avez vu? Question. Do you want me to repeat the question? The President, uh, could you please judge, uh, put the question Madame again to the civil party? Civile, vous plaît? Is it true that you said this morning? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? La juge Fens, est-ce que vous m'entendez? Le... Est-ce que vous m'entendez? I didn't get a translation. Does that mean yes? Je n'ai pas entendu. Est-ce que vous avez dit oui ou non? Um, can you hear me? Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Yes, Your Honor. Réponse Good. oui, Madame la juge. You mentioned this morning Question. that you saw two people ce matin who were electrocuted. Vous aviez vu deux en train Do de I se remember this correctly? Que je me souviens bien de ce que vous avez dit? Yes, uh, that Réponse. is correct, Your Honor. Oui, exact, la juge. Can you please explain to me what Question. exactly you Pour saw? Ce que vous avez vu Who was doing what? Qui faisait quoi? At the time, as I uh, told the court, on Comme the way back from the uh, work side, uh, when I got back to the office, uh, uh, my uh, co-workers and I uh, went to the dining hall. And on the way, uh, we uh, went to the dining hall. We nous saw two chemin, uh, workers uh, who were um, a, uh, electrocuted uh, under the mango tree. And one of my uh, co-workers who was on the way with me told me that, uh, look, uh, there were two people who were being electrocuted under the mango tree. Can you explain how they were electrocuted? Can you explain how they were electrocuted? As for the Réponse. tools they used to electrocute uh, the workers, I did not know, but uh, one of my co-workers uh, just uh, told me uh, that, look, uh, there were uh, the, uh, people over there who were being electrocuted. I only saw from the distance, actually, and I did not recognize uh, the uh, tools they used, and I did not uh, know what actually happened uh, when I uh, saw that. I actually walked past uh, that scene already. Can you tell me how far you were from the place where 
people were allegedly electrocuted when you, you looked at them or when you saw it? Do you remember the distance, approximately, roughly? In my estimation, uh, the distance between the place where I was walking and uh, the place where people were uh, electrocuted, it was about 10 meters away. And you could, was there anything between you and these people, trees or bushes, or did you have free sight on the scene? Ou bien vous voyez-vous parfaitement ce qui se passait là-bas? At the time I was walking uh, along the way uh, with my co-workers, but when they were electrocuted, those uh, two uh, people, uh, there was one mango tree, actually the mango tree trunk uh, that was blocking the scene. So again, what did you actually see? Question: Qu'avez-vous vu concrètement? As I informed your owner, that's what I saw. I only saw uh, two voilà people were under vu, the uh, Madame, mango trees, and then my friend told me that uh, those two people were, a, were uh, electrocuted uh, uh, a bit earlier on, and that was it, and then I walked past already at the time. Oh, do I have to understand that Question. these people were lying under the mango tree? Dois-je comprendre que ces personnes floor. étaient allongées, qu'elles étaient par terre, sous le manguier No, at the times uh, they Réponse. were, uh, one of them was sitting uh, on the ground and the other one was standing on his feet. Et l'autre était debout. And, and who was Question. allegedly electrocuting them. Et qui était en train de les électrocuter? Yeah. I do not know Réponse. the name of the person, Je ne connais pas le nom de cette personne. Uh, but uh, the two combatants, uh, they actually were from uh, different units. Mais les deux combattants appartenaient à des unités différentes. Did, did you hear people shouting or crying? Or... Crying or screaming, or was that a silent scene? When I was walking there, uh, nobody actually screamed uh, for help or anything. I only saw them uh, standing and sitting there still. Just so, so understand the situation, was your friend telling you, look at these two people, they have just or previously been electrocuted? Is this what the scene was? At that time, I was uh, walking along the way with other uh, co-workers, and then they simply attracted my attention uh, to look at people under the uh, mango trees. I did not see them being electrocuted, but I was told by my co-workers that they had just been uh, electrocuted. Last question. As far as you could tell from the 10 meters, were these people alive or dead when you looked at them? À votre avis, ces personnes étaient vivantes ou mortes Si vous pouvez nous le dire, bien sûr. Uh, both of them Réponse. were uh, still alive. Uh, uh, at the time, uh, I saw one person sitting and the other Je one standing, assise, but they were still alive. Okay, I'm moving question. to another subject. Bien, Very short question. question. <coughs> you mentioned <coughs> that one of your tasks at the work site was um, chantier, carrying 50 kilo bags. Do I remember that correctly? Yeah. 
Réponse. Well, I was assigned to uh, carry a cement. Non, m'a demandé de transporter uh, du ciment. Pack of cement, uh, un sac de ciment around 50, uh, kilograms. environ 50 kilos. Right. Can you tell Question. me what your weight was at the time? How much did you weigh at this time? At that time, Réponse. I never weighed my own uh, weight at that time. We did not have the scale, so I did not even pesé, bother to weigh myself, balance, so I did not have any idea how much I weighed. Do you know how much you weigh today? Now I weigh at 60 kilograms. Did you weigh less or more at this time Question. when you were carrying the bags? Pensez-vous que vous pesiez plus ou moins à l'époque où vous deviez transporter ces sacs? At the time, much, much less, much less than this. Uh, at that time, Réponse I was very thin and skinny uh, due to the uh, insufficient food ration. And like now, I, I have put on uh, more weight. Pris um, kilos. And at that time, I uh, could not imagine that I could uh, cope with uh, the uh, work and the harsh condition, but I had to, to do it. Can you remind us how many hours a day you were wearing bags? Which weight either more than or basically what you yourself were weighing? Plus que vous ou à peu près le même poids que vous. How many hours a day were you carrying those bags? Tiens, Je me demande pendant combien d'heures par jour vous deviez transporter ces sacs? For uh, our unit, at that time, they did not allow us to carry one bag of cement with two people. Nous one person had to carry uh, one bag. And Une when it was too heavy, and I could hardly uh, carry Parce that, uh, I was walking with difficulty actually carrying the uh, cement. And then when I was too slow, then others in the, in the group, uh, they uh, uh, warned me why I was uh, uh, so slow in uh, carrying that. But I had to try at that time. I had no choice, but I had to uh, keep going. So we are talking several hours per day, yes or no, when it comes to carrying the... <laughs> The, the cement bags. Yeah. Question: Pourriez-vous nous dire combien de sacs vous deviez porter par jour? As I told your honors, uh, they uh, transported uh, the cement uh, by a train wagon, and then they uh, made us carry uh, the uh, cement uh, from early in the morning until uh, 12 in the uh, noon. And then in the afternoon, uh, we had to carry until 5 uh, in the evening. Okay, I'm moving to another subject. Um, it's a short question. You mentioned you a meeting on regiment level. Do I remember this correctly? In which you participated? In the regiment meeting, as I told the court uh, this morning, they uh, took me out of uh, the division and then uh, they attached me to the bodyguard unit, uh, unit uh, 75. And then uh, they uh, told me at that time uh, that I had to work harder. And uh, as I uh, told uh, the court, I had to get up early in the morning, as early as uh, 7. Uh, as early as 3 a.m. in the morning. Actually, 3 a.m. sharp, uh, they would uh, blow the visual in order to wake us up, in order to send us to the rice field. And then they, uh, we would take a break at 11 uh, in the morning. And then at 1, we had to go back uh, to the field. And we come back at 5. And at 5, uh, we had to um, go to the fields again in order to prevent the rat from destroying uh, the, uh, the crops there. 
And uh, my regiment had told uh, us uh, that your previous uh, superior uh, had betrayed uh, the uh, Anka, then uh, you had to have you had to work harder in order to avoid being executed. Even though you had to work until your blood come out of your body, you would never have a chance to go back and see your parents if you did not work extremely hard here. And if you remember, at this meeting, did you hear a tape being played? Do you remember a tape being played? During that meeting, it was not being recorded or tape recorded. Uh, it was only an oral uh, communication. Just to be clear, I didn't mean that the meeting was tape recorded, but was a record played to you? Did you listen to a record during this meeting? The President, uh, Civil Party, please uh, hold on. Civil Party, no, um, I did not listen to the recording. Actually, it was a meeting. Uh, we were sitting uh, in a row, and then the leaders came uh, to uh, brief us, and they told us what I have just told the court earlier. And now I come to my last few questions. Can you tell me why you joined the army? When I joined the uh, army in 1975, at that time I thought to myself that uh, my uh, parents were in the uh, cooperative and they lived in a very, very poor uh, condition. They had a very difficult life. So uh, during the liberation in 1975, my uh, younger brother uh, came to visit uh, our family in the village. And then uh, they, he told me about the difficulties that our family members had to endure. We did not have food, enough food uh, to eat. My parents were living in a very difficult situation, and they had to go to the rice field in the morning, and they came back very late in the evening. They were all skinny, and they only had their skin covering uh, their bone. Uh, then I thought to myself that if I uh, live in the cooperative, I would not uh, survive uh, probably. So I follow my uh, brothers and I joined the army in division um, for 15. And just so we have it all in the same place, and I want to be very precise on this now, can you tell us after you joined where and where, where were you in the army until 79? And what positions did you have? No details, just line, line it up. You started in 75 as what? Dites-nous ce qui s'est passé et dans le bon ordre. Vous avez commencé en 1975 et ensuite. When I joined in uh, Division uh, 450, uh, I was attached to the uh, hospital uh, attached to that uh, Division uh, 450. And then uh, at that time, uh, the leaders were arrested. I did not know where they had been uh, taken to. I do not recall the exact uh, year. Uh, at that time, uh, the um, division head as well as the uh, director of the hospital uh, disappeared uh, mysteriously. I did not know where they had gone. And then uh, the uh, patients also uh, disappeared. So in the small unit uh, which I was uh, attached to, uh, was sent to uh, Bang Prajap and we had to uh, do the farming uh, over there. When we were doing the farming, I was told that uh, for the uh, fifth 
Uh, for the for my unit, I had to be transferred Ensuite, to uh, the bodyguard uh, unit in Obaik Om. Uh, that was the uh, unit 75. And Obek at that time, uh, they punished us uh, by not giving us enough food ration to eat every day, and uh, that we were subject to harsh uh, labor conditions over there. Dur. And then in 1977, uh, they uh, sent uh, me to Kampung Chenang uh, province. And we stayed there for six months uh, in Kampung Chenang, and then they sent us back uh, to Obaik Om. And when we were, we uh, was with Obaik Om unit for about two months, and then they uh, when they sent us to Kampung Trolaik Le in Kampung Chenang province. And at that time, my role was to transport ammunition. Je I had to uh, carry ammunition from the uh, warehouse uh, to the Je cart. Uh, and then for, uh, I worked there for uh, several days, I, I, to my recollection, and then I saw uh, the Vietnamese uh, troops, and then I also saw the uh, tanks and the exchange of fires. And at that time, I was uh, terrified. I did not join with those units. I uh, fled uh, to the jungle uh, from that time onward. Thank you. That concludes my line of questions. La juge Fence, merci, j'en ai terminé. The President, thank you. Le Président, and Judge uh, Jean-Marc Levenge, you may proceed, please. Oui, madame. Je n'ai yes, juste qu'une question uh, pour uh, clarifier one, ce uh, point-là. Est-ce que vous êtes marié pendant la période du camp so démocratique ou après est-ce que votre mari avait and, uh, euh, des fonctions dans l'armée uh, during that era, I uh, was not married. Only once en I uh, got back marié. to my uh, village uh, did I get married, uh, get married to my husband. Je vous remercie. Je n'ai pas d'autres questions. Uh, thank you. I have no further questions. Now I hand over the floor to the defense team. Bien, la parole est à présent aux équipes uh, to, de défense. First of all, we hand the floor over en to the defense team for Nguyen to put uh, questions to the civil party in question. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, um, Madam, uh, Madam Civil Party. Bonjour, Madame la Partie Civile. Um, you were 23 years old when you joined the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea, is that correct? I do not uh, recall the exact uh, date, but I remember that uh, uh, was in 1952, that was the year I was born, but as for the date, I am not uh, sure. Um, you spoke um, about um, a brother who was also in Division 450. Um, I understand from your civil party application that his name is Kung Kong. Um, is that correct? My brother's name is Kom, and uh, his Réponse, full name is Mom Kom. Um, when, when did he uh, join um, the military forces fighting Lon Nol? Réponse. I was in 1973 under the uh, en uh, force of uh, the village chief at the time that he joined uh, this military until uh, the fall of the regime. Do you know why your brother joined 
and military forces fighting Lonol. Les forces qui luttaient contre Lonol. As for the motivation to join the soldiers to fight against Lonol, I did not know. But at that time, the village chief forced him to join the army, and that was the reason. Was he your only brother who had joined the revolutionary forces? Question: D'autres de vos frères ont-ils fait de même? Rejoint les forces révolutionnaires? Yes, he he was the only brother I have. C'était le seul frère que j'avais. What happened to your brother in Division Four Five Zero? Did he stay? Did he, be, did he stay a member of Division 450 all the way until 1979? When I was working in the military hospital, uh, my brother was uh, tasked uh, to uh, produce some uh, pot, uh, cooking pot. Uh, but then later on, uh, when their leaders were arrested, and then uh, my brothers and I separated, we did not know uh, uh, where uh, we were at that time, and we separated everything. But did he stay a member of Division 450 until 1979? Question, est-il resté membre de la Division 450 jusqu'en 1979? Could you please uh, repeat your question? I do not quite get it. Did he, like you, uh, st stay a member of Division 450 until uh, 1979? Response. No, he actually did not stay uh, in the... Uh, uh, in the military until 1979, but I did not know uh, where he had gone or where he had been appointed because we separated in 1976 or so, and then he went somewhere else and I went on my own and I never met him. And when did he leave the Revolutionary Army, Division 450? When did he uh, quit his work? When he stopped uh, being a soldier in the army, that is after I uh, returned to the village and I saw him living in the commune there, and I did not know as when he uh, quitted, because I returned to the village that is after 1979, and I saw him there. But do you know whether he left Division 450 before the end of Democratic Kampuchea? I didn't really know as to when he did that because we separated from one another quite a long time ago. I understand. Um, how many months exactly were you working at um, the division hospital? Do you remember? I worked uh, at the division hospital for uh, a full year. Pendant toute une année, j'ai travaillé à l'hôpital de la division. Did you start working almost immediately in the hospital after you had joined the Revolutionary Army?
working for the division for 50 hospital after I returned with my brother and I was simply an ordinary combatant and I was assigned to work in the hospital. Sometimes I was assigned to work in the kitchen while at other times I was assigned to uh, give injection to the uh, sick patients there. Were you a member of um, Battalion 453? Please uh, repeat your question. Um, were you a member of um, Battalion 453 uh, within Division um, 450? At that time, I was subordinated to Division 450. However, my uh, female unit was in Battalion 53. Um, do you recall a comrade Dune? as Deputy Secretary of Battalion 5-3. No, that name does not ring a bell to me. In my Unit 53, uh, my superior, Superiors were Tia and Gun, and the person you mentioned uh, does not ring a bell. Um, do the names Nam and Sen mean anything to you? Were they members of 5-3? But, um, Battalion 5-3? Nam and Sen? No, the names uh, do not ring a bell to me. Um, when you were stationed to work at the division hospital, where did you sleep at night? Was that in the hospital or was that somewhere else? While I was working in the hospital, there was a separate ward for the patients and for the staff there. Do you recall um, when you were staying at the hospital? Um, how much, how your food ration was, how much rice uh, you and your female comrades were eating per day? The living condition was similar to both the patients and the medical staff. The food ration was that we sometimes had cooked rice and sometimes we had two uh, ladles of gruel. And uh, sometimes we actually stole rice uh, belong or uh, rations for the patients so that we could uh, have a little bit more to eat in the morning the patients were given uh, cooked rice and uh, they would have another uh, meal in the evening the uh, patients who were admitted to the hospital were not uh, combatants from the front of the fields, but they were those who were assigned to work 
in the uh, rice fields and due to the they contracted the fever and due to starvation and lack of food uh, they became sick and admitted to that hospital. And is my understanding correct that uh, once you were done working at the division hospital you were then sent to uh, Ubak Kom uh, to work in bodyguard unit 75? pour travailler dans l'unité 75 des gardes du corps. After I stopped working at the hospital, I returned to live at Bang Trayapt, then I was tracked to unit 75 at Old How many um, divisions 450 um, forces were stationed at Ubakom? A female unit which was subordinated to Division 450 comprised uh, a battalion and there were three, in fact, uh, underneath it was uh, subgrouped into three uh, platoons and each platoon comprised 30 females. And what was the reason that you were assigned um, to work in one of those bodyguard units? Um, I did not actually know the reason at the time. I was uh, transferred, that is my... Je ne savais pas pourquoi à l'époque, j'avais été transféré. My female battalion unit was uh, tracked Mon out to the location and as I stated in the morning, we only realized once matin, we arrived, we were told that senior commanders of our division were accused of being traitors, so they had been arrested, and they said that uh, it, it, is anonymous. it is synonymous to a slogan that when the big tree fell, the small trees would be crashed, and when our senior commanders were arrested, we would be under their supervision and their uh, monitoring. But were you told um, why you had to, why you were assigned to bodyguard unit 75? I was not informed. Of the reason, we were only told that we were being reassigned, but no proper reason was given, and only upon our arrival were we informed of the reason. The chief of the unit informed us about that that our senior divisional commanders have been arrested. And as I just arrêté. told you, when the big tree fell, uh, dit, it crashed uh, the small tombe, trees, and we were sent there to be under uh, monitored, to be under monitor or to be screened out. We were not given enough food and we, we were forced to work hard. And we could not have uh, sufficient time to sleep as we had to be to wake up by a whistle blow at 3 o'clock in the morning and by 4 we had to be at the rice field in Obek Om to do rice uh, transplantation or to uh, carry the rice the seedlings. There were no ox carts to transport rice seedlings and we had to carry the, them on our head. Where was um, Division 450 military headquarters? Uh, where were most Division 450 soldiers stationed? Was it at Ubakom? Était-ce à Aubeckcom? 
cha con buôn rìa nâng cả đề bì môn máu đôi kim thang chẳng nâng nâng tạm ở division 450 was based at kilometer number 6 near Trang Chimbrest that was the headquarter of the division and some soldiers were deployed to Bang Trojab area but there was no headquarter in Old Back Home and only our female unit was sent to be integrated into Unit 75 under the supervision of the general staff. Um, is it correct when I say that um, Division 450 consisted about, of about um, uh, 5,500 or 6,000 soldiers? Is that a, do, do you know? Is that correct? I don't know the, the, the figure or the number of soldiers in the division. I only know there were many soldiers uh, within a division. I was merely a combatant, so I did not have the knowledge as to the number of soldiers in that particular division. But um, assuming that there were about um, five and a half thousand or six thousand soldiers within Division 450, do you know where the majority of these soldiers were? Um, where their headquarters were? Where were they sleeping at night? As for the, the uh, sleeping quarters of various units within the division, I have no uh, knowledge about that. As we were under separate uh, units, other we were subordinate to Division 450, I simply knew about uh, the women living in my unit, but I cannot tell you about uh, the living condition or the sleeping quarters of other soldiers in other units. What can you tell us about the living conditions in um, Bodyguard Unit 75, uh, of which you were a member? Uh, how were you sleeping at night? Did you have mosquito nets? Did you have mats to lie on? Um, can you tell us a little more, give us a little more details? When I came to uh, stay with Unit 75 at Obike Om, we actually uh, slept in the uh, abandoned houses of those former Phnom Penh city dwellers. As those houses were empty, and there were all kinds of uh, housing facilities there, small houses, big houses. However, there were only empty houses and there were mo no sleeping mats, no mosquito nets. So all, all women from Unit 75 were sleeping in the houses, um, the abandoned houses within Ubekom, is that correct? Exact. Yes, uh, my unit from Division 450. And when we were when we arrived to, to join Unit 75, and I apologize, uh, Council, please repeat your question. I'm lost here. Am I, uh, no problem. My question was whether all the female cadres within Unit 75 were sleeping in the abandoned houses in Ubekom. Is that correct? We, our unit uh, came from Unit 450 to stay in uh, Unit 75, and uh, 
we were under the supervision of our supervisors who were also from the southwest zone, and we all were living together. But do you recall how many weeks or months while you were at Unit 75 did you stay in those empty houses in Ubekom? Vous avez séjourné dans ces maisons vides à Aubekom pendant que vous étiez à l'unité 75. Kiam mana anggap dia jat sepram dengan Aubekom, nih kiam lagi saya bantu pasang. I joined today at unit 75 in Aubekom and I stayed there for one rainy season. Pendant toute une saison d'été. Which year? En quelle année? Question. I do not remember the year. Je ne me souviens pas de l'année. I do not know whether it was during 1975 or 76. I only know that I worked for one season in for one rainy season in a rice field, and that we already have wasted rice by the end of our stay. And, uh, and subsequently, I understand your testimony. You went to um, work at the Kampong Chinang Airfield. Um, do you recall when that was that you were sent for those six months? Was it at the end of the rainy season, uh, the beginning at the dry of the dry season, or was it a little later? Do you recall? I was uh, transferred from Obek Om to work at the uh, airfield in 1977, but I cannot recall the exact months. However, it was uh, during the, the months of the dry season. Um, Was it in the first month of 1977, uh, or was it at around um, the 17 April anniversary? Can you try and see if you remember an exact day or week in early 77 when you were sent to Klang uh, to the airfield? As I have just said, I recall clearly it was in 1977 during a dry season. And now from my recollection in terms of the current practice, the dry season means April. Um, let me go to another subject and then come back to this, uh, um, this topic. Um, the commander, uh, the chief of Division 450 was Song, is that correct? Yes. Soong was uh, commander of Division 450. Do you remember who his deputy was, the number two of Division 450? I only uh, knew Soong, who was the commander of Division 450, and I did not know his uh, deputy. I knew him because I met him in his office when I arrived. And I knew his uh, mother-in-law and his elder-in-law. That's why I knew him rather well. As for his deputies, I had no knowledge. 
Um, do you recall the moment when you heard that Sung, whom you knew well, had been arrested? entendu dire que Soon avait été arrêté. Soon, que vous connaissiez bien. J'ai entendu dire qu'il avait été arrêté. And in fact, while I rushed with Division 450, I did not know that he had been arrested. Only after I was integrated into Unit 75, then I heard that he had been arrested. So were you still at Ubakom when you heard the news that Song had been arrested? I heard about his arrest Réponse, entendu parler de son after I arrived and stayed at Obek Om and Après there was a meeting and the chief, uh, my chief of the unit uh, informed us of his arrest. Nous a il avait été Were you informed Question, about the reasons of his arrest? Les motifs de son arrestation? They did not say anything about the reason. We were only told that uh, senior commanders in our division had been arrested. And that was all. Have you ever heard of a commander of or leading military commander in Division 450 named Kroon? Although I stayed in Division 450, I never heard of that name. Um, do you know if uh, Sung, whom you said you knew well, um, was in contact with the commander of Division 310 named Un? était en contact avec Oon, le commandant de la division 310. No. I was not aware of uh, this relationship or communication. Je ne savais rien d'une telle communication ou d'une telle relation. Um, have you ever been told question, um, vous a-t-on jamais dit that uh, Song together with others had been accused of trying to stage a coup d'état uh, in early 1977? No, I did not hear anything about that. As I said, I was in my unit and I did not know anything about uh, the affairs or events occurring at other units. Have you ever heard stories about um, weapons from Division 450 being stored um, in order to use these weapons for an armed rebellion? No, I did not know anything about that. I did not dare want to hear anything or story about another unit. We had to be mindful of what we say or what we ask for, and I adhered to a principle of a planting a kapok tree, so I just kept my mouth shut. Um, do you know whether Sung had any contacts with somebody called Koi Tun or Koon?
No, I was not aware non. of uh, any uh, contact. And as je I said, I only knew Zoom, and I did not know dit, any uh, uh, tune or koi tune. I was simply a combatant, and we were not allowed uh, to know anything of a confidential nature with our superior commanders. This morning you gave testimony um, saying that you did not know the reasons uh, why you were sent um, together with your comrades to Kampong uh, Chinang airfield. Um, did I understand that correctly, that you have no idea why you were being instructed to go to Kampong Chinang airfield? I was and of course we were not uh, being sent there alone. Our unit chief was being assigned there too in order to supervise our work. Um, did they, or were you told rather um, why you were sent there for six months? They did not give us the reason or as to how long we had to work there. We simply followed the instruction. We were sent there and later on we were uh, transferred back. Is it um, correct, Madam Witness, that when you arrived, um, at Kampong Chang Airfield, um, there were about uh, 1,500 plus uh, soldiers of Division 450 uh, working. Let's say more than a thousand of Division 450. Did you know that? From my from the division who were sent there, I did not know the the entire number of the combatants from that division. I only know the number of the uh, female unit which I belong. Um, Mr. President, I have a, a document in front of me that is E3-849 um, with a passage which is indeed deleted in French um, rela relating to Division 450, indicating that um, in um, March 77 there were 1526 soldiers and uh, six guests from Division 450 working in Kampong Chinang. So that's where I'm getting my questions from. Um, Madam w Civil Party, if I'm saying that in March 77, about 1,500 Division 450 members were working at Kampong Chinang Airfield, does that somehow jog your memory? No, no, about uh, the number from the division. Uh, combatants were attached to various units, so I had no idea about the total combatants working there. I only know about the, the number of females in my uh, unit or battalion. Even for us, uh, female combatants, we Même were prohibited from making contact with male combatants. Uh, Let me rephrase my question. Um, que when you arrived with your female comrades, were there already thousands of people working at the airfield? Thousands of soldiers working at the airfield.
stone breaking uh, machine and other uh, construction uh, equipment and I believe that uh, there were up to several thousands of uh, workers and combatants working on the field. And were you able to find out uh, how long these um, combatants had already been working at Kampong Chiang Airfield. How long had these thousands of work, uh, soldiers already uh, worked when you arrived? Do you, do you know? When I got there, there were scores of people over there, but I did not know when they got there and uh, where they were from. Um, when you started working at Kampong Chiang Airfield, um, you said that you had uh, to carry cement um, at one point. Did I also understand that it was a period of two weeks that you and your female comrades had to carry cement from train wagons? As I uh, told the court uh, several times, uh, I was uh, task uh, to dig canals, and then once the canaux, uh, transport of the cement uh, arrived at the site, uh, we were uh, site, mobilized to uh, have carry uh, the cement. Pour le Was it only um, your unit belonging to Division 450 who had to carry the cement, or were also other um, division members involved? At that time, Réponse. there were there were no uh, anyone, any combatant from other uh, divisions or other unit uh, coming to help. Actually, uh, they only made uh, the unit uh, with which I attach Seul together with all the members in my unit, the female member, uh, we were made uh, to carry those uh, cement bags. Um, how were you able to establish that the bags that you were carrying um, were around 50 kilo each? Because uh, other co-workers uh, told me uh, that uh, it weighed uh, 50 kilogram uh, per uh, sack. Uh, I never carried uh, the uh, cement uh, before, and uh, but I was only told that uh, it weighed uh, 50 kilogram each. And, and who was your unit commander at the time? Who was instructing you and your female comrades? Um, to do the various work at the Kampong Chinang airfield. Who told you, for instance, um, to carry the cement? In my small unit, um, there was a woman by the name of Vân, I call uh, Vân. Uh, who was the commander in my small unit. Le de ma unité. 
And was she also your commander Question. when you were still stationed at Aubakom? Était-elle également votre commandante lorsque vous étiez en poste à Aubakom? God. Réponse. She was the commander of the small unit. C'était le commandant de la petite unité. As... Uh, as for the um, regiment, uh, the commander was one, and then the other one was uh, Kong. Il y avait également Kong. And uh, they took uh, they took uh, us uh, by two trucks uh, to uh, Kampung Chenang uh, Airport construction site, and then uh, uh, Bong Vinh uh, was the uh, was the, the commander at that time. But was your commanding Question. officer the same Votre uh, woman, the same female cadre um, as femme cadre on uh, the U, when you were stationed at Ubakom? Was, was she the same, celle qui vous um, vous étiez the commanding à officer? Or was there a change personne? Once you had arrived at Kampong Chang Airfield. Une fois que vous êtes arrivé sur le chantier de Kampong Chang. When they uh, sent uh, me uh, to uh, Kampong Chang uh, Airport construction site, uh, Vin was assigned uh, uh, to be the commander uh, uh, over there. So there was no change uh, of uh, command at that time. Uh, she uh, remained uh, the commander in our unit from Obaik on to the Kampong Chang Airport field. And, and was there any change in her command in the way she treated you and your female comrades? Before and after you were sent to Kampong Chang Airfield, or was it, the, was it the same? Que vous avez été envoyé travailler sur le chantier, ou bien vous êtes-elle traité de la même façon? I am afraid that I do not understand the questions when you talk about the change. Uh, what do you mean by uh, the change? Je n'ai pas très bien compris. That's maybe an unclear question. question. Um, question the way your clair. commander gave instructions to the unit, Vin, was that the same, did she do that the same, um, in the same manner um, before you were working um, in the military and you were sent to Kampong Chang as after? In other words, was there any change in the way she commanded the unit once you had arrived at Kampong Chang Airfield? When uh, she got to Kampong Chenang, réponse. Uh, her command, uh, her attitude toward uh, commanding uh, the unit was the same, uh, without any change. Did, did she make you work, <coughs> work harder? <coughs> Excuse me. Did she make you work harder uh, once? She and your unit had arrived at Kampong Chenang Airfield, or was it um, was her command the same in terms of working hours, etc.? When she got to Kampong Chenang, it was exactly the same as uh, when she was commanding at Obaik Om. Uh, we had to work, for example, from 5 um, a.m. in the morning. And, uh, and actually, in uh, Obaik Om, we had to start working uh, from 3 a.m. in the morning. But over there at Kampong Chenang Airport Field, we had to work from 5 until uh, 11. And then we uh, broke for lunch. And then we started work from 1 until uh, almost 9 in the evening. So in terms of the nature of work, it was different. But uh, her command was uh, the same, uh, basically. We had to... 
uh, work um, until uh, 9 in the evening at the airport because that was to avoid uh, the heat. Uh, so at the time, uh, uh, Sister uh, Vin, who was the uh, commander uh, of our small unit at that time, uh, she uh, was quite determined in getting her job done, and uh, she also convened some self-criticism session as well uh, in order to uh, avoid those who uh, had to pretend uh, to be uh, lazy. Did, did she ever tell you? or your comrades in the unit while you were at Kampong Chang Airfield um, that she was punishing you, that she was refashioning you, that she was tempering you? Did she, any, did she ever use any of those words in relation to you or the comrades, uh, the female comrades in your unit? At uh, that site, uh, as I told the court earlier, uh, those who uh, did not uh, commit uh, to the work, um, she did not uh, criticize us at the work site, but in the evening we would uh, meet uh, to get her, and then she would uh, criticize. Uh, for example, if somebody uh, did not uh, commit to the work uh, that has been uh, imposed, uh, then uh, he or she had to try to accomplish it the next time. That was the general criticism she made. The president, thank you, uh, council, and thank you, civil party. Um, now it is appropriate for the La afternoon uh, break uh, for 15 minutes. We will resume at 3 uh, p.m. this afternoon. And court officer, please facilitate the uh, civil party so that she can rest during the break and then uh, have her back in this courtroom uh, before 3 p.m.